morning we'll begin with uh, advanced accounting the new scheme of education and training of course if you look at uh, the thing like you'd have learned in your bcom or foundation journal ledger trial balance preparation of final accounts rectification of errors brs bills of exchange then uh, certain areas like single entry system accounts of non profit organization departmental accounts certain things you'd have learned like banking company accounts insurance company accounts electricity company accounts things like that okay you'd have done higher purchase accounting all those traditional system of accounting is totally removed in your syllabus you are not going to learn them you are not going to learn them here and there you will prepare some journal entry and you will prepare which one certain ledger accounts etc and all this accounting new syllabus accounting is moving from traditional accounting to reporting based accounting traditional accounting to reporting based accounting what is traditional accounting we pass a journal entry like purchase account data to cash then manually we open purchase ledger we post the cash in the cash account we post what purchases then that is updated in the trial balance then we prepare what a trading pnl account and balance sheet in that process there may be errors you rectify the errors then you do all those things so tr the traditional system of accounting has been removed now we have got reporting based learning reporting based learning what do you mean by report reporting based learning practically how a concern reports the financials okay a sole trader or a company how they prepare and uh, give the financials accordingly we are going to learn if you look at the chapter 1 chapter 1 is about introduction about which one accounting standards let me tell you br briefly about every chapter every chapter then we'll go in depth learning see in accounting we follow so many concepts cost concept right record the transaction at cost in accounting we follow like money measurement concept we record only monetary value non monetary values are not recorded in accounting business owner is treated as separate from what i mean uh, uh, the person who is running the business is separate from what business and the money we treat right so accounting standards are there to guide or accounting standards are there to what guide for example as an industry you are facing a problem you are facing a problem for example let's assume we are running a construction company we are running a construction company i have undertaken a work it will take 3 years of time i am i am doing a building construction it will take how many years time 3 years time she is doing a road work it will take about 7 years of time he is doing an interior decoration work it will take about 6 months of time okay when will we know the actual profit or loss eppo nammalku actual profit or loss we will come to know only on the completion of work for me building construction will be over when after 3 years i will come to know the profit or loss only after what 3 years she will come to know the profit or loss only after what 6 years 7 years okay he will come to know the profit or loss in what 6 months but all of us should prepare accounts every year for tax purpose company law purpose we have to prepare accounts every year right now the problem is my work will get over after 3 years only i will know the profit only after 3 years first year end how to find out profit or loss first year end la iruke how to find out profit or loss construction is complete or incomplete incomplete how to find out profit or loss her road laying project how many years it will take Seven years. She is also in the second year end. Okay, how to find out profit or loss? For him, no problem. Nine months of work is over. She he received the money, spent the money, the matching concept, received forty crore, spent forty crores, ten crore profit or loss he can work out. Clear? But what about us? How to find out profit or loss? Remember, accounting standard will guide us. Accounting standard will. guide us how to for work out the profit or loss how to work out which one profit or loss so accounting standards are giving guidelines for different purposes number 1 for valuation number 2 for finding out profit or loss number 3 how much to you have to record in balance sheet how much you have to record in balance sheet how much you have to disclose to the shareholders there is a major loss in the company should we have to inform the shareholders or not accounting standards will guide us which loss should be informed which loss should not be informed in the mari so they are which one accounting standards in india accounting standards are being issued by accounting standards are being issued by institute of cost chartered accountants of india and again uh, that is applicable for whole of india that is applicable for what whole of india we will talk about 
that particular thing in introduction chapter. Second chapter, what is the next one? Framework of preparation and presentation of which one? Financial, financial statement. statement. Simple. How to prepare and present financial statement? Is the financial statement of a company read by one person or many people? Like Reliance Industries, okay, let us take uh, TCS or Wipro or Infosys. Who can read financial information? Shareholders? Yes. Income tax department? Yes. Bankers? Yes. What about general public? Can you and me read p and account balance sheet of those companies? Yes. Anybody can read. It becomes a public document. It becomes a public document. Whenever there is a public document, there should be uniformity. A limited, B limited, C limited, D limited. Can they read financial statement in their own method? No. You should use what? A uniform code, uniform words. For example, in India, in India, when shares are issued by the company for more than face value, how will you name it? Shares or the face value 100 rupees. It is issued for 120 rupees. How to name that? Extra amount, we call it as what? Securities premium in India. But in US, they call it as EPIC. Additional paid in capital. They call it as which one? Additional paid in capital. Otherwise, in US, they don't use the word share capital at all. They call it as common stock, preferred stock. Common stock means equity shares. Preferred stock means preference shares. Preference shares. In India, we use the word shares. In US, they use the word what? Stock. In India, stock now, what is the meaning? The purchase stock kept in the godown. Godown will require stock than stock. For them, they don't use the word stock for the stock. What is it? For the stock, they use the word inventory. Inventory means the raw material, work in progress, finished goods. They don't use the word opening stock, closing stock. They call it as what? Opening inventory, ending inventory. Remember, the words used itself is different. In India, we call it as debtors. Bills is your bill. In UK, if you travel, they will call it as accounts is your bill. Accounts? receivable in us they call it as trade receivable they call it as which one trade receivable remember an investor in australia let us assume we are all investors in australia we want to compare a company in india company in us and company in uk and invest money is it possible to compare india we have got share capital there common stock preferred stock india share premium rest of the world additional paid in capital india we use the word resource and surplus rest of the world they use the word what Retained earnings, they call it as which one? Retained earnings. In India, we call it as buyback of shares. If you go to US, they call it as treasury stock. What is it? Treasury stock. India, like treasury stock now, what is the meaning? Government security. Treasury stock now, government bonds are called as what? Treasury stocks in India. But in US, when you buy back your own shares, that is called as which one? Treasury stock. In India, we use the word debtors, bills receivable. In US, they use the word accounts receivable or trade receivable. The word itself is not clear. Commerce man itself will find it difficult to understand. Look at a common man who is not having any commercial knowledge. Whether the words are the same? No. Then how will you be able to compare? In India, we call it as debentures. US, the same debentures are called as sometimes bonds. Bonds issued by the company. Clear? So, words are different. Now, how will you be able to compare? As an Australian, I want to compare Indian company, UK company, US company. Decide where to invest the money. When words are different, order is different, now, how will you be able to compare? So that's what. The preparation and presentation of financial statement should lead to better information, better comparability. Truth should be given. What should be given? Truth should be given. False representation should not be there. Overstating the numbers should not be there. Okay. Profit recada, but we will show it as a profit. The company will be running in a loss, we will show it as a profit by manipulating accounts. Those things should be avoided. How to do that? We are going to discuss in chapter 2. Chapter 3, accounting standards are not applicable for all. Accounting standards are not applicable for all. It is applicable only for certain companies, certain people. Okay, where, how, how much, to whom the accounting standards are applicable. We are going to see it in what? Chapter number 3. Totally 29 accounting standards are there. In the two accounting standards are removed. How many accounting standards are removed? Two accounting standards are removed. Effectively, how many accounting standards are there? 27 accounting standards are there. Whether those 27 accounting standards are applicable, to whom it is applicable, we are going to learn in what? Chapter 3. This is part of your module 1. Then, thereafter, disclosure based accounting standard. Pay attention. In Bharadwaj Institute, let's assume uh, one, AC, uh, one project remote is lost. In the financial record, whether we have to put information that 
one project remote is lost or one ring light is lost some pins markers etc lost should we have to inform why it is a small amount it is a small amount but on a particular day we have not locked it properly projector laptop screen or some systems are lost causing the loss of about 10 lakhs rupees should we have to disclose what do you mean disclose in the pnl account we will write it as loss disclosure we will give the following items were lost okay because of some theft or whatever you have to write and tell the shareholders why that is lost that is what disclosure means providing an extra disclosure providing an extra disclosure for example in pnl account you could have seen loss on sale of asset loss on sale of asset i need the information loss on sale of asset why how i want to know simple where will you know disclosure will be there loss on sale of asset includes plant and machinery purchased for 5 crore which was which became useless because of some government regulation that machinery cannot be used now we are selling it for 2 crore there is a loss of 3 crore like that we will give explanation clear why there is a loss because government put a restriction that machinery is polluting we cannot use it we want to dispose it so we are giving a disclosure so all these accounting standards clear a is 1 3 17 18 20 24 25 all these are which one disclosure means providing an extra financial information everything we learn in detail then module 2 asset based accounting standard these accounting standard talks about how to record the asset how to record the asset for example what is the first one valuation of inventory inventory means stock stock includes three things raw material work in progress work in progress then finished goods how to value them which cost to include which cost not to include sometimes market value may suddenly come down how to value the inventory how to find out market value of the inventory those things we are going to learn same way for fixer assets how to record it investments how to record it when we borrow money how to record it when we lease an asset how to record it intangible assets like goodwill patent rate copyright how much to be recorded when asset value suddenly goes down that is called as what impairment how to record it we are going to see they are called as which one asset based accounting standard then another one is which one liability based accounting standard for example an employee joins a service today after 20 years when he retires we have to pay what gratuity okay leave encashment we have to pay retirement benefits we have to pay retirement benefits the employee will work for next 25 years after that a person will retire now will, will you create a provision on the 25th year or year to year year to year we have to create provision how to create provision for retirement benefits that we are going to see then some provision we have to create sometimes there may be contingent liability which may or may not be payable which may or be what may not be payable how to record it okay let me ask a general question three things we use liability provision contingent liability what is the difference what do you mean by liability we had seen so many liabilities in the balance sheet side like share capital creditors loans like that what do you mean by a liability how it is different from provision and what is a contingent liability liability is a certain amount liability is an obligation for a certain amount for example i borrowed from her one crore how much i should pay one crore is the liability clear yes how much i have to pay one crore when both are clear liability is clear amount is also clear and that is called as what liability i purchased goods from him five lakhs whether i have to pay yeah liability is clear what is the amount five lakhs that is called as which one liability then what is a provision provision is an liability for an estimated amount obligation for an estimated amount for example okay pay attention we create a tax we create which one tax at the end of the year we create this much of tax payable to create pandra is it an exact amount or an estimated amount estimated amount actual tax may be more than that or what less than that okay depending upon certain circumstances you will learn in tax okay certain expenses may be allowed or disallowed so actual tax may be more or what less so creating a provision for tax is an actual liability or estimated liability estimated, estimated liability so liability na amount is certain payment is certain amount yes payment yes that is called as which one liability what is the provision liability is there sir but how much you will pay is it an actual amount or an estimated amount estimated amount what is the next one contingent liability means 
obligation that may or may not arise. Obligation that may or may not arise. For example, some customer has filed a case in the court. It is pending in the court. Will you pay that liability? Will you pay that liability? No. If the court says, yes, you have to pay, no, we will pay. If the court says, no, no, we win the case, we will not pay. May or may not, no, that is called as what? Contingent liability. We are going to learn in detail about when to call it as a liability, when to call it as a provision, when to call it as what? A contingent liability. Contingent liability are different types. Of How to recognize it, we are going to learn. They are called as what? Liability based accounting standards. Then accounting standards for preparing the financials. For preparing which one? Financials. Pay attention. 31st March, we close the accounts of a company. Is it possible to prepare the report immediately and give it to the shareholders? 31st March, we close the accounts. 1st April, can we prepare a report and give it to the shareholder? Now, what should happen? Auditing will happen. Rectification of errors will happen. We will value the stock. Board of directors have to approve. Board of directors have to approve, then give the financial statement. How to give the financial statement. Now, during this period, some events may happen, like losses, bad debts, etc. will happen. Whether you have to adjust or not, whether you have to adjust or not, we are going to see this. Clear? So these are all reporting based accounting standards we are going to see. Revenue based accounting standard. Revenue based accounting standard. Na? I told you, you know, the construction contracts. I do the work for three years. She does the work for seven years. He is doing the work for what? Six months. Now this accounting standard will tell us how much of profit you have to take it. First year work complete. For this work complete, how much of profit you have to recognize? Seven years work, two years work complete, how much of profit you have to take it? For him, no problem. Nine months work, already complete, he can take the profit like that. How to recognize income, we are going to learn. This is called as revenue recognition. Pay attention. You all join classes now. Okay. Your exams are in May. We will complete the syllabus by February. February, the syllabus will get over. So, which is coming in the same financial year. When did you start classes? August 23. When the coaching will complete? February 23 or March 23, 24, March 24. What is the financial year we are running in? 23, 24 financial year. So remember, you paid the fees, we run the services, everything is over. What about the next batch students? Who will pay the fees in February 24? Their coaching will be completed in August or September 25. August or September 25. When will he record income? We collected the fees in February itself. But the coaching will complete only in what? September or October month. So will you take it as income for the current year, 23-24 or 24-25? Now this accounting standard will tell you when to record the income. When to record the income. One more example. Let's assume you are running a furniture shop. You are running a furniture shop. I come and make an order. I make an order. I just come for inquiry. I make the order. I pay full advance. I pay full advance. Then you are manufacturing the furniture. Then you are coming to home and delivering the furniture. Then giving the bill. Giving the bill. When will you record income? I gave the uh, let us see order about 20 days back. Full advance I gave about 15 days back. Okay, you gave me the bill about 10 days back. You manufactured the furniture about 7 days back. 4 days back you delivered the furniture. Today you are sending the bill to me. When will you record the income? In your furniture shop owner, when will you, at what point you will record the income? If nothing is given, people will do it accordingly. For example, he will say, order is placed, full advance the customer paid. Let me take it as income like that, he will take it. She will say, let me give the bill and record the income. Which means, today she will record the income. Another person will say, I manufactured the furniture, I collected the money, I will record income like that. Another person may record. Now this according to Sarah, nine cells, when to record the income, when to record the income. This is not giving example, it gives a definition. When risks and rewards are transferred to the buyer. When risks and rewards are transferred to the, we will learn in depth, just for your understanding I am telling. When risks and rewards are transferred to the buyer. You tell me when risks and rewards are transferred to me. Order. Order placed? No. Advance money given? No. When goods are manufactured? No. When goods are delivered, what happens? Risk is with me thereafter. And ownership is also with me thereafter. So at that time only you can record income. At that time only you can record income. Like that we will be learning so many definitions and recording which one? Income. Then 
we are going to record for example if you are getting government subsidy how to record it you are installing an anti pollution equipment solar system for that government is giving subsidy how to record it when two companies amalgamate when two companies join together we call it as what amalgamation it can be a taking over b b taking over a a b joining together forming c limited how to record amalgamation we are going to see what is the next one X company is holding more than 51 percent in Vina. That is called as holding company. I hold more than 51 percent of shares in Y Limited. I am called as which company? Holding company. The other company is called as subsidiary company. How to record the income or how to record the balance sheet? We are going to see. If I hold more than 20 percent, I am called as associate. If I am holding A Limited holding more than 51 percent, I will become holding company. Other company will be called as subsidiary company. As per law, if I hold more than 20 percent up to 50 percent, 51 percent is a subsidiary. 20 to 50 percent, I will be called as associate company. I will be called as associate company. How to record that investment? Joint venture. Two companies promoting a third company. That is called as which one? Joint venture. Not joint venture that is there in CA Foundation. It is totally different. How to record it? So this we are going to see. This is module two. Module three, like we are going to learn about how to prepare. Final accounts of a company, how to prepare which one? Final accounts of a company, how to prepare which one? Cash flow statement. A company can purchase its own shares, how to record it? Again, amalgamation in detail we are going to learn. A loss making company can go for reconstruction, we are going to learn. And what we are going to learn? Accounting for branches including which one? Foreign branches we are going to record. This is what is your syllabus. This is what is your syllabus. If you look at number one, syllabus looks simple. Accounting standards primarily. What we are going to learn? Accounting standards primarily. Generally, this one, lengthy answer area, accounting for amalgamation, consolidation, uh, cash flow statement, all these things. Okay. In your textbook, module 3 will be like lengthy answer questions. What do you mean by lengthy answer questions? This chapter number 10 and module 3 will be like lengthy answer question where you will be getting about 10 marks questions or 20 marks questions in the money. Remaining and all, everything will be tested for about 5, 5, 5, 5 marks. Okay. Each accounting standard out of 29, 7 accounting standards, okay, 10 accounting standards will be tested in exam. Each will be for 5, 5 marks. Each will be for how many marks? 5 marks, 50 marks. It may be a 1 mark question. It can be a 3 marks question. It may be a 5 marks question. Accounting standards weightage is like 50 marks. Sir, what about the remaining 50 marks? What about the remaining 50 marks? The weightage will be based on holding and subsidiary company accounts. Which one? Holding and subsidiary company accounts, cash flow statement, final accounts of a company, then amalgamation of companies, then branches and which one? Foreign branches where it will be tested for another 50 marks kind of a thing. So uh, every accounting standard is important. Then last four or five chapters are important for 50 marks kind of a thing. So what we start today, it will continue uh, for about that four or five months period of time where we are going to have thorough knowledge, in-depth in -depth knowledge kind of a thing. Now listen, in the old pattern, in the old pattern, there were so much in the syllabus, like partnership accounts, okay, I mean, uh, dissolution of partnership, piecemeal distribution, sale of a company, totally removed. That reduces our learning time by 30 hours. That reduces our learning time by 30 hours. Departmental accounts, removed. Banking company accounts, removed, okay. Electricity company accounts, totally removed. Insurance company accounts, removed non banking finance companies accounts removed there is a chapter called as profit prior to incorporation totally removed managerial remunerations declaration of dividends of course that is there in final accounts but majority of the parts are what removed higher purchase accounting for higher purchase totally removed branch accounts sorry departmental accounts uh, removed from the syllabus like that if you look at old syllabus versus new syllabus okay unnecessary areas are totally removed what is required for a chartered opponent is kept in the syllabus. What is required for a chartered opponent is being kept in the syllabus, number one. Number two, one advantage is that all these chapters that we are going to learn, you don't have a past knowledge. You don't have which one? Do you have knowledge on accounting standard 17, 18, 20, 24, 25? No. It is easy to teach a chapter where the students are not having a past knowledge. So everything will be what? Zero based. Let you be a science student or commerce student, a student done about 10 years back, a student just passed foundation and coming, all of us coming what? Zero based. Your previous knowledge is kept as a base there where we build on kind of a thing. So it is easy for us to learn. And if you look at weightage, if you look at weightage, 
அக்கௌண்ட்ஸ் உடனே பன்னெண்டு பேப்பர் எடுத்துட்டாதீங்க சிக்ஸ்டி பர்சன்ட் வில் பி ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் ஹவு மச் பர்சன்டேஜ் வில் பி ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் சிக்ஸ்டி பர்சன்ட் வில் பி ப்ராப்ளம் இட் கேன் ரேஞ்ச் ஃப்ரம் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் டு சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் சிக்ஸ்டி பர்சன்ட் சொன்னால் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் ப்ராப்ளம் இருக்கலாம் இல்லை சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் கேட்கலாம் ரிமைனிங் தேர்ட்டி டு தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் ஆர் தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டு ஃபார்ட்டி பர்சன்ட் இட் கேன் பி விச் ஒன் தியரி தியரி ஸோ தியரி ஆல்சோ யூ ஷுட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் அண்ட் லேர்ன் ஸோ மே மோ பி மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் கிளாஸ் ரூம் ஒர்க் எவ்ரி திங் வில் பி பேஸ்ட் ஆன் விச் ஒன் தியரி அண்ட் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் ஃபார் இயர் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் மெயின் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் யூ வில் நாட் பி கிவன் அக்கௌண்ட் ஷீட் யூ வில் நாட் பி கிவன் விச் ஒன் அக்கௌண்ட் ஷீட் லெட் இட் பி தியரி பேப்பர் லைக் லா ஆர் டைரக்ட் டேக்ஸ் இன்டைரக்ட் டேக்ஸ் ஆர் காஸ்டிங் யூ வில் பி கிவன் விச் ஷீட் த சேம் த மெட்டீரியல் ரூல்டு நோட் புக் ஆர் ரூல்டு ஷீட் வில் பி கிவன் வேர் யூ டு ரைட் நம்பர் ஒன் நம்பர் டூ கிளாஸ் ரூம் பர்பஸ் யூ கேன் யூஸ் மல்டி கலர் பென்ஸ் ப்ளூ பிளாக் அண்டர்லைனிங் ஸ்கெச் மார்க் வாட்டர் மார்க் டிராயிங் சார்ட் யூ கேன் யூஸ் எனி கலர்ஸ் பட் மெயின் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் மஸ்ட் பி யூசிங் வாட் பிளாக் பென் ஒன்லி பிளாக் பென் ஒன்லி சார் கேன் ஐ அண்டர்லைன் யூ கேன் அண்டர்லைன் பட் டே வில் நாட் வேல்யூ த பேப்பர் ஓகே அண்ட் சார் கேன் ஐ யூஸ் ஸ்கெச் மார்க் வாட்டர் மார்க் நோ சார் கேன் ஐ டேர்ன் மை நோட் புக் ஹரிசாண்டல் அண்ட் ரை வெர்டிகல் ரைட்டிங் இஸ் அலவுட் ஹரிசாண்டல் ரைட்டிங் இஸ் நாட் அலவுட் சார் தெர் இஸ் அ பிக் லெஜர் அக்கௌண்ட் ஐ ஹவ் டு ப்ரிப்பேர் நான் யூஸ் டூ ஷீட்ஸ் யூஸ் சைட் ஒன் சைட் டூ லைக் தட் யூ கேன் டூ இட் பட் கேன் ஐ டேர்ன் மை நோட் புக் ஹரிசாண்டல் அண்ட் ரை தட் பேஜ் வில் நாட் பி வேல்யூட் தட் பேஜ் வில் நாட் பி வேல்யூட் கிளாஸ் ரூம் பர்பஸ் இட்ஸ் ஓகே பட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ இன்ஷோர் தட் யூர் யூசிங் வாட் டூ ஷீட்ஸ் வென் யூர் நாட் ஏபிள் டு ரைட் இன் ஒன் சைட் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் டிபார்ட் பிரான்ச் அக்கௌண்ட்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோன் டு சி த்ரீ பிரான்ச் அண்ட் டெபிட் சைட் த்ரீ பிரான்ச் அண்ட் கிரெடிட் சைட் யூ கேனாட் கம்ப்ளீட் இன் ஒன் ஷீட் வேர் யூ யூஸ் ஷீட் ஒன் ஷீட் டூ வர்டிகலி ஒன்லி யூ கேன் ரைட் யூ கேனாட் டேர்ன் வாட் அரிசால் அண்ட் ரைட் அண்ட் அகெயின் எவ்ரி ஆன்சர் மஸ்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் இன் அ நியூ பேஜ் ஐ ரை ஐ ரிட்டன் கே ஆன்சர் டு கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் ஃபோர் ஏ ஃபிஃப்டி பர்சன்ட் ஆஃப் த பேஜ் இஸ் ஓவர் can i start in the same page next answer no it must be going to which page next page every fresh answer must be in which page a fresh page only okay half page is over sir remaining half what to do just put a pencil uh, maybe uh, strike out then automatically it will go to what next page and you write kind of a thing these are the ground rules of examination and please remember there is no revaluation option available in ca no revaluation option retotaling option only is there what do you mean by retotaling if you apply if you don't make out in the exam if you apply for it only they will check the mark entered once again clerical error only will be checked your paper will not be revalued your paper will not be revalued so uh, that is what so that particular pattern also we have to do it in the classroom in classroom whatever we learn should be in line with what examination that's why ruled notebooks uh, the two notebooks per subject is given to you for writing and other things so ensure that you are using those notebooks and uh, practice in examination style and uh, short forms are not allowed examination la writing bal bd or 2 cd that is not allowed you must write to balance b bar d that must be written properly okay debit credit must be written properly those things we learn it in the process of classroom kind of a thing so this is about basic things so if you look at are we doing conventional accounting or practical side of accounting we are doing 100% which one practical side of accounting where after becoming a chartered accountant after completing this intermediate course when you go for training you will apply all the accounting standard learnt practically for example uh, let us assume you are valuing stock for a trader you are valuing stock for a trader you will apply which one valuation of inventory rule you are valuing a fixed asset you will apply as10 and suppose if there is a deviation you last question as per as10 is allowed but why are you deviating like that you last question if investments are made by your client okay you have to value investment short term investment long term investment debt instrument equity instrument how to value them you will learn clear if a company has borrowed money that is called as what borrowing cost how to treat borrowing cost how much you take it to p and l account how much to be taken to asset and the money you will learn clear lot of things whatever you learn here whatever you learn here you will be 100% applying in practice but old syllabus la whatever students used to learn like which accounts partnership accounts how many partners will die in a year how many partners will get admitted how many dissolutions garner versus murray died about 150 years back but uh, people still follow garner versus murray rule that is not useful at all okay so so many things like higher purchase old generation concepts are removed whatever you learn in the classroom okay when you go for article ship work after this you will learn practically you will see cash flow statements prepared by a company and using the cash flow you will advise a client இதே மாதிரி போர்ஷன் அடுத்த வருஷம் நீங்க பிசினஸ் மூடிடுவீங்கன்னு சொல்லுவீங்க டு தி எக்ஸ்டென்ட் யூ வில் பி an expert in preparing which one cash flow statement operating cash flow is there 
investing cash flow is there, financial cash flow is there. Based on the last three years cash flow, you'll advise the client, okay, you're having too much of idle funds invested or your operating cash flows are coming down. If it goes down next two or three years, your business may become what? Sick like that, you'll advise your client kind of a thing. Clear? So if your client is having different branches, now corporate world, they run one branch or multiple branches? Multiple branches. Each branch out to work out accounts. Branch audit is one of the most important thing. Clear? Branch audit is one of the most important thing for that knowledge of which account is required. Branch account is required. So every bit that you learn in inter, especially accounts, will be useful for your practice also. Number one, we don't have a knowledge on this. We, will, we start learning. See, every student sitting in the class is equal to me. It is not that those who learn. For example, anyone knows about what is, uh, uh, for example, uh, AS11 uh, in the class? Anyone knows about AS11? AS22? They are the BCOM la Pritchirking la? No, everybody starting learning what? Fresh. So, uh, that learning phase is going to be uniform for all. Okay, any student, let it be just, I mean, uh, completed foundation and coming to the class or completed degree or PG or whatever, it is going to be, the learning base is going to be what? Same for all. So, uh, with this introduction, I stop for today because we had introduction in the morning. So, again, one and a half an hour. Again, too much of theory on the first day is not good. We will start in the next class with which one? introduction to accounting standards who issues accounting standard what is the procedure of issuing the accounting standard when the accounting standard will come into force those things we will learn in the next class kind of a thing